School. Welcome to the Lee Schools TV podcast. I'm Adam Wright. Joining us today is Ed Matthews, principal of South Fort Myers High School. Ed, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. Honored to be here. Uh, so first things first, just in case anybody's wondering, no, we, we're spelling your last name right. Only one T in Matthews, right? Yes, sir. Can't afford the other one. <laughs> do, you know what, do you know the etymology behind that? Why some have Etymology. Two? I, I love yeah. an etymology podcast. Um, <laughs> no, I just, uh, that's just the way that it came out. You know, I was born that way. All right. Um, okay. So I've noticed that you've been, you've kept the shaved head look for a while now. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it looks great. Yeah. Um, Tell us the backstory. But I know you shaved your head. It was a an, an event that you had at your school. Tell us about that. Yes, we uh, we had childhood cancer awareness, and a, a young man uh, shaved uh, shaved my head at Galisano Children's Hospital. And um, at first, it was one of those things where I was very very inspired by it. And because the young man then later grew his hair back out, and the family had that that relationship with the family, and then um, I think quite frankly, I'm going bald, so I just went with it. Well, it looks good. There you it's go. It's a good Thank look you. for you. Um, okay, so you've been principal at South Fort Myers High for three years now, about. Yes, sir. Um, so what does a principal do? Because some people might have an idea of what they do, but take us through kind of the, the day-to-day and maybe some bigger picture stuff. But what does a principal of a high school do? Well, th- I think there's a lot of filters as to what a, a principal does. I think some people would look at the principal and say that he does everything or he or she does everything all the time because we're required or uh, we want to uh, be at all places, whether it's academic, athletic, uh, arts, uh, community, everything. Um, some of us would say that all we do is sit in our office and drink coffee because you know there's that natural thing of everybody's working so hard for the kids. And, but the reality is you have to wear a lot of hats and you have to be able to, uh, help and, and serve a lot of different groups of people, uh, with the common goal of making the community better. And by making the community better, you're doing that through each and every child that comes through your door. So what's a, I know I'm sure every day is different, but can you you take me through uh, what a day in the life of Ed Matthews looks like? Uh, I would think here recently, uh, I think it depends on the season, but I think, you know, as we're ending towards the end of the year, uh, a day in life is, you know, make sure that the school's running uh, properly, make sure that everybody's safe, um, making sure that all our students are on track to graduate, uh, having opportunities for those kids once they graduate to go either into uh, the workforce, college, trade school, the military, um, taking the time to meet with the family and the child to find out what is in the best interest of that kid and playing off of their strengths and, and helping them with their weaknesses. So when you're asking, what does that mean on a daily basis? It's a lot of one-on-one time with kids. It's a lot of one-on-one time with teachers and a lot of one-on-one time with uh, family members. So I don't think any day is the same. I think each day is unique, just like the child. And um, you, you know, there's days where you're putting out fires, but a lot of times you're creating opportunities and with that, it, it makes each day, you know, more unique. And you, um, so you've, you've worked at, um, you've been in the district for a while now. Can you tell, take us through, um, what, what, what actually, why don't we start? You mentioned earlier that you graduated from Lehigh senior high school. Mm-hmm. Where did, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Lehigh, uh, short end of it. We moved down here in the mid eighties and, um, You know, went to Lehigh Elementary, Lehigh Middle, then uh, went to Riverdale my freshman year. It was overcrowded. They later built uh, Lehigh Senior. I was the third graduating class. I went off to college. Uh, My old football coach called me up and said, why don't you come back to Lehigh and give back to the community? Um, I'm big into that. So I came back to Lehigh Senior High School, coached football, coached everything really, and started my teaching career there. And one thing led to another and I got into administration. And after seven years of teaching, Uh, My first administration job was at Island Coast. I was there for two years and then um, was blessed to uh, go to Riverdale High School. Uh, I was there for about four or five years. And um, there was sort of a tweener year as things were developing in the district. And I started off at the middle school at Varsity Lakes Middle. Uh, Then halfway through the year, I was moved to East Lee. And then at the end of that year, I was uh, blessed with the opportunity to be the principal of South Fort Myers High School. 
And so when you, when you came on board to South, um, mm -hmm. what was your, was that your first, uh, principal gig? Absolutely. So what was your, what was your vision for the school? First time as a principal, um, coming to South, what was your, what was your vision, your goals, um, for, for South Fort Myers High? Uh, when I first got there, it was, um, I think it was just more of, of, of filling the buckets of, of the, the school community. I think that um, they sort of been punched in the gut a little bit. And, you know, my thing going in on a personal level is I could sort of feel a lot of negative emotion. And I just wanted to feel, you know, boost people up. And so with that, you know, through social media and through my beginning mantra, it was, you know, about being powerful. And we had a great year. You know, we went through a lot of transition. Um, but our discipline numbers went down, our academic achievement went up, and we had some success in you know, some athletic areas. And the kids had a great year, and it was really, it was really a blessing. You know, the year was really, it was, a, it was a big struggle at first, but then as the year went on, it was really awesome to see the kids uh, bloom and, and see things going in a, in a proper direction. Now, I know, um, I know you're known for, and I mean, I see it myself because I've mm -hmm you know, visited South several times over the past couple of yeah. years and run into you a lot. And you're always out in the halls mm -hmm. talking with the, the students and stuff. So you're known for being very involved. Uh, you're known for being very involved. Um, so is that, has that always been your mantra, your so. mindset of yeah. being out visible in the hallways mm -hmm. and interacting with yeah. students and staff? You know, it might be a little bit of ADD, you know, but, um, I'm a, I like to move around, and um, when you got 2,000 students and you got a teaching staff of 110, you know it's it's not really fair to an individual to speak just to the group. I really feel like I talk to each individual as much as you can, and there's a lot of power in, in saying somebody's name, you know, with a smile, a pat on the back, a handshake, and a lot of times I find that it's not intentional at first, but I think that as you see the positive effects of it. You seek it out more and more where you want to make sure that people know that you care about them and that you're thinking of them and, you know, you're reinforcing what they're doing right. Mm -hmm. What uh, what has been um, some of the more more what, what are some of the more challenging parts of, of being a principal of a school, especially one as big as South where you said 2000 students? I think it's just time. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by time, it's just the uh, commitment level that you have to make to make sure that you're doing a good job. Uh, for me personally, it's a passion. So uh, for the most part, I don't feel that commitment is a struggle. Um, it's something that you really have to want to have in your life. You know, you certainly, I know a lot of people would say that with a salary, you know, you make more money. But really, when you think about the amount of time that you do and everything else, you know, it, it sort of, it really does balance itself out and you're responsible for so much. But if you really care about making a difference in a kid's life and, and really making sure that you're providing opportunities, not only uh, for the kids, but also for your teachers and for your parents, um, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And to me, you know, it, if, you know, it fills my bucket that knowing that people are, are going in a better direction, you know, based off of the hard work that, you know, we're trying to do as a group. Yeah. I know, um, Work-life balance is a oh, yeah. a big topic yeah. of conversation, yeah, especially absolutely. these days. And I know you were telling me earlier you're you have a wife and four kids. Yep, yep. wife, um, four kids. And I'm sure you work a lot of long hours. Being yep. being a principal, is it? Do you find it challenging to to do the work-life balance? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the uh, the kids, you know, they they're at the age where they love coming to the school and you know seeing the older kids and you know they're it's all part of it's all like one big family. Um, I think that when you're talking about the extracurricular activities, whether it's plays and sporting events, um, I love the students of South Fort Myers High School, but I also love my kids. You know, I want to make sure that I attend those as well. So it's a how delicate old, balance. How you know? old are your kids? Uh, I got a wide range. So I got them from six all the way up to uh, soon to be 16. Um, what is your, so you, you know, we address some of the challenges. What's your some of your favorite things about being a principal? Uh, one of those favorite things is coming up is graduation. You know, that sort of puts it all together. Um, you know, Wednesday coming up on the 24th, I'm really excited we're gonna have our first career fair. Um, to me, I think that, 
that's a summation of everything that we do is getting the kids ready for a job, a career that they can really be successful in. So uh, that I'm really looking forward to that. We've had our college signing day the past two years. That's a huge thing as well. I get really excited about that. I just get excited to see achievement, you know, and I, I also get excited to see kids who have struggled and had failure rise up and overcome that and, and be better because of it. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of involvement, I know that you are, South Fort Myers is very involved on social media. Yeah. Um, and all, and I, in every post I see on, on Facebook, Twitter, um, are you on Instagram too? Mm -hmm. I think uh, there's always the hashtag powerful in all caps. Normally. There you go. Where'd that come from? Did, was, was that you? Did you come up with the pretty much hashtag yeah. powerful? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, to be honest with you, I was driving across the Everglades. I was going to the other coast and I was sort of meditating on, you know, where we were at and direction that we were going. And, um, just sort of came up with the idea of that, you know, my one word being powerful and it resonated with the students and the, the teachers and staff. Because I think that there's a lot of things that are pulling you in different directions. You know, I mean, stress is at an all time high, whether it's electronics, you know, work life balance, politics. And I, I, to me, the, the mantra powerful sort of made you rise above all that stuff and say, you know, just keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I've actually had kids come back to me. You know, I had kids graduate two years ago that come back and I haven't seen them and the first words out of their mouth is powerful. And so, you know, that resonates and it it's provided a, mm -hmm. uh, a base for a, a powerful future. Uh, if you could, uh, describe the, um, the, the culture at South Fort Myers high now, how would you describe it? Uh, very loving. Yeah. Um, something that I don't think a lot of people realize and I didn't realize until I became the principal there is just how diverse we are. Um, we have students all the way from Captiva and I have students who come all the way you know, inner city Dunbar, all the way from very south Benita, and everywhere in between. And it's really, really interesting to see those different groups blend together. Um, I didn't realize how diverse we were until one day, there's that website niche.com that rates your schools and all that. And they had a listing on there. And I don't know how valid it would be, but they had us as the 12th most diverse high school in the state of Florida. Huh? And I thought, you know, Florida is a pretty diverse state. So for us to be 12th most diverse, that's pretty amazing. And you see it every day. Um, last year, I pulled a report and I think that we had uh, students born from 34 different countries wow. just at South Fort Myers High School. And they all get along. You know, there's typical girl drama, boy girl drama, uh, things of that nature. But for the most part, everybody gets along and everybody's rooting for each other. And uh, it makes a big difference. Speaking of diversity you have at South Fort Myers there's a diverse curriculum or opportunities oh, absolutely, for yeah. students so I know that uh, South has a uh, a great welding program mm -hmm. so if you were trying to pitch the school to anybody out there listening to you know mm -hmm. maybe some middle schoolers out there who are trying to figure out what high school they want to go mm -hmm. to how would you pitch South and the opportunities available to students at South I don't think it would be a pitch. I think it'd be a reality that if you're looking for an opportunity where you can come in and really see where you fit for the rest of your life on like what kind of track, you know, they call them career pathways. And if your career pathway means that you want to go directly into college, we have the programs for that with AP capstone, dual enrollment. You don't have to pay anything for your two years of college. If you decided that you wanted to go into a medical pathway, we have you know courses that take you right into that. I have quite a few kids who they're not going to stop just being a nurse or a phlebotomist, but they want to be a doctor. And rather than just reading in a book, they want to actually apply what they're learning. I mean, we have uh, three classrooms that are simulations of a, of a hospital. And at the end of that, they actually go into a hospital and uh, do their rounds. I mean, you don't see that in any other school. And then if you decided that you're more with your hands, you know, we uh, offered electrical two years ago, went gangbusters. And um, with that, the businesses said, hey, we need, we'd like to see some electricians. That's gone amazing. Um, you know, going in next year, we'll have plumbing. Uh, we'll have uh, painting, which a lot of kids are really excited about. That'll be, the, those will be brand new. Those will be brand new. And then we have auto. And in fact, uh, yesterday I visited some of the kids who were working at Galliana Dodge. And um, the manager said, you know, just keep sending us your kids because, there is a huge skills gap mm -hmm. for, for kids 
who want to work hard and want to learn a trade. Yeah. So the short end of it is, I just want to provide an opportunity. I, th you know, I, I recently talked to um, Dr. Martin from FGCU, the president, and I went to the, I was invited to the uh, construction management uh, open house that they had, and I asked him. I said, well, you know, what made you go in this direction? And it was really interesting because he said, you know, Ed. I talked to the faculty because a lot of times people say, you know, why go in that direction? You know, we should be going more higher academics. We should be doing this. We're not, and, and, and the same thing with us. We're not going away from anything higher academic. We're just going in a direction that kids are, that life is going in right now, where people can go in multiple different directions and still get the result that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And he made a great analogy. He said, you know, if you go on to Expedia, he says, I can go from here to Dallas or here to Pittsburgh and I can take, there can be a layover, there could be a direct flight, I could take different types of airplanes, there's multiple ways to get there. It's just whatever, every kid's going to be different. And that's what I believe at South. Yeah. Every kid's going to be different, whether it's emotionally, whether it's mentally, you know, just based off of their, their family situation, as long as we're sending them in the right direction where they can be successful. Yeah, and, and like you said, if a student is more geared towards wanting to go to, you know, a higher level mm -hmm. university, obviously you mm -hmm. have that path for them as well. But if, I mean, you can't really argue with the job opportunities that are available no. in trades. I was recently out at Fort Myers Technical College and talking with their marine, mm -hmm. their the boat uh, instructor who mm -hmm. teaches, you know, how to work on boats. And he was telling me that, like, we, there are never, like, there's never not an availability open or a job position mm -hmm. that we're trying to fill with because they, there aren't enough students coming in with the skills they need to fill all the jobs that they have. So they're constantly hiring people all the time. There's a, um, I, I recently spoke to a couple uh, different apprentice um, organizations and it's amazing the statistics all the way across the board and it's greater, but I would say ballpark wise in the next 10 years, 50% of skilled trade professionals will either be too old or have retired and we have focused in education so much on every kid going to college mm -hmm. that there's a huge skills gap mm -hmm. college is a great opportunity statistically if you go to college you'll make more money on average but we're forgetting that there are so many opportunities for kids in the skilled trades mm -hmm. and you know my biggest success story on a financial standpoint is last year we had a kid go through the welding program was a very with it kid and he researched he did his end of the of the uh, the job searching and he discovered that underwater welders made a tremendous amount of money he got his welding certification he graduated in may this past year and in october he came back and saw me and blew me away really really nice kid and he went to FMTC over the summer. He got his Welding II certification. He signed up with the company that he researched. They paid for him to become a certified underwater diver. Uh, it was about a two-week course, and he was underwater diving down in Key Largo. They paid for all expenses. His first month on the job, he made $15,000. First month? First month. Wow. And the uh, a lot of times kids come to me, and you know you're a starving college student or you're starving you know, uh, 20 something trying to figure the world out. And he was asking me for a number to a financial planner because he's on the opposite end of the, the problem. He had so much money. He didn't know what to do with it. Because... Would you say the name of that uh, <laughs> program? Was it? And I know a lot of people don't want to believe that, but those are the kind of opportunities that are out there. And it's, it's very real. It's just a matter of having the withedness to find them and being able to work to actually do it. Yeah. And I mean, depending on what you study in college too, it doesn't always mm -hmm. guarantee you a high paying job either. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I um, pulled a, a quote from an article, um, local news article, I think it was around the time that you uh, were just coming on to South Fort Myers as mm -hmm. principal. It was a quote that you said in the article and you, you said, whatever we can do to increase student engagement, I'm all for it. Student engagement occurs from the home and I want the parents to be involved. Mm -hmm. End quote. So how, how, how do you get students and their parents mm -hmm. to, to be more engaged? I invite them into the school. So um, we do a lot of celebrations 
you know, academic, you know, a lot of schools do that kind of stuff. I think what, what separates us at South is I spent a tremendous amount of time in inviting parents to come in where we sit down with, with a child, I don't want to say child, they're, not, they're young adults, with a student and the people that are in contact with them most often, their teachers, their mentors, and really find out what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, how can we build on their strengths, how can we build up their weaknesses, and it's uh, had a tremendous effect. You know, I, um, the, fir the year before I got to South, I think there were like 220 some out of school suspensions. And you know, the following year, I think we got it to, my first year there, I think it was like 18 suspensions. And then last year, I think we were like 11. And now this year we're only at seven. And so kids wanna be at the school, they're having success. And a lot of it is, the parents know that if a kid comes home, they're, they're receiving a quality education and the kids want to come to school because, the, you know, the success stories I'm telling you, mm -hmm. uh, whether in the workforce or going to college and, and having success. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, when you called them children and then you caught yourself, I'm not going to call them children, yeah. they're young adults. Um, I guess technically that, you know, they are still minors, but I, I, I even sometimes hear, um, college administrators referring to college students as yeah. children and they're like all over 18. I'm like, they're technically adults. So I don't, um, well, I think that, uh, mentally, you know, some kids obviously grow at different ages, you know, different rates. Yeah. But I think sometimes what I'm noticing is I think the, the higher you set the expectation, I think we set the expectations high for a lot of things. And I think just as a whole child, I think we need to set the expectations a little bit higher. And I think that the, or actually, what I've observed, especially with our career academies, you have to be more mature than just sitting in the back of the class, reading out of a book, you know, throwing paper wads at each other, you know, hypothetically. I know that doesn't happen anywhere else. But if you're in welding class and you're holding the torch, you know, if you're goofing around, somebody gets hurt. Yeah. And same thing in automotive, same thing in medical, you know, same thing in cybersecurity, firefighting. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, and it makes the kids grow up. Mm -hmm. And not to say that I want to take away a kid's youth, but I want to make sure that when they leave us, they're ready to do to be able to take care of themselves and provide for themselves, and hopefully down the road, their own family. That's good. That's a good point. And uh, um, like I said earlier, I've, I've you know I've been out to South a mm -hmm. few times for some different stories. Thank you for coming out. Of course, and they've there's been some great. Mm -hmm. feel good stories at your school. Mm -hmm. Let's just take a minute to, to talk about a couple of them. Um, last school year, you know, after some uh, tragic incident over in yeah. Parkland, uh, the students at your school really ra rallied to hold a, a vigil mm -hmm. on the football field. And we were out there, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, mm -hmm. right now we'll have the video going and you can see all the students coming out to the football field and and then they all formed a big heart on the mm -hmm. field and held up. Well, why don't you just explain kind of the, the genesis of that? Well, event? you know, with that whole situation, there was a lot of politics involved. And th there was a blend of politics and safety. And then with that, there was the underlining current of emotionally, how do you process that terrible event and how do you pay respect to it? And with all the other factors that were to the side, it was sort of identified that the students needed to do something to pay respect to what had happened. And then it was, how do you do it in the safest manner? And how do you do it, you know, to appease all angles of, of the political discussion? And the kids came up with that idea. Um, and with that, you know, we had a couple uh, senior sponsors that sort of guided them a little bit. But when that developed the day that it happened, um, we just made an announcement and said, anybody who was interested in paying respect, you know, make your way out to the football field at this time. It was before school hours, so there was no, you know, in regards to school policy or anything. Yeah, they didn't miss any class time. They didn't miss any class time. It was early in the morning. And it was amazing. You know, a lot of times you would think that kids being kids and the wide array of maturity levels and different backgrounds that you would have kids that would try to take advantage of it and do something, you know, silly or, you know, just immature. And instead, as a, as a collective whole, they all went out to the football field and very respectfully, they created that heart on their own. 
and they had created this uh, ceremony in which at first, you know, they created the heart and then uh, an announcer said a few words of respect and then they, uh, they did 17 seconds of silence followed by the 17 names. And then at that time, the, fo the football field lights went off. And then from there, um, they took their cell phones out and, and put them up in the air. And it was really amazing. Yeah. It was really a uh, uplifting moment, spiritual moment. You know, I, just talking about it sort of makes the hair on me. I was just going to say, I remember being there and I got chills when, yeah, it when was really, all really the phones cool. went on. It and, was really, really yeah. cool. And um, there's videos of it on our social media. And I believe you guys have videos of it. And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, it was... Um, I don't want to say it was national, national, but I know throughout the state I saw that different people covered it. Mm -hmm. And um, it was one of our most watched videos ever. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, really cool moment. Mm -hmm. Really cool moment. And then um, just a few months ago, mm -hmm. I was at South um, to do a story about uh, a young woman named Aaliyah mm -hmm. Sainval. Yeah. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, uh, she's from Haiti mm -hmm. and I think a new student this year. Yeah. Um, and the students at South did something really special for her. Tell me. About well, this, and, and actually that's the second event since I've been there mm -hmm. where they had done something for a student. Uh, two years prior to that, we had a student whose wheelchair didn't work and they raised a tremendous amount of money and bought him a new wheelchair. And, and so with that, it's become a reoccurring theme. If you see someone in need, help them out. Well, this year, Aaliyah came to us from Haiti and I haven't been able to have a, a deep discussion with her because she doesn't really speak English, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at a deep level. Yeah. But it's one of those things where you can feel, you know, the love inside of her and how much she appreciates everything going on. And, you know, when she came to us, you could just see that she was miserable. She um, she has one leg and she had an issue where something happened with her crutches and they broke. And... Um, she was having a hard time getting around. Then, you know, she had a wheelchair and then something happened to the wheelchair. And you could just see that she just wasn't allowed to just be a kid. You know, she just, uh, she was very, very disabled. And the kids saw this. And instead of doing something that would be negative, said, hey, you know, we're going to do something nice. They got with the, t the teaching staff. And they ended up raising, I'm going to say close to $10,000 mm -hmm. for her to get a prosthetic leg. And I think it was maybe fourteen thousand. Yeah, it was pretty. Some, it, was it was pretty high. It yeah. was pretty high amount, and um, you know, people really stepped up, and they got her this prosthetic leg, and they got it fitted. We, you know, were able to get with uh, someone to teach her how to walk, and she's in the school now. Literally, she had never walked on her own until coming to South Fort Myers High School, and you guys came out, you did the video, and in appreciation of all the people that put that together. And I think it's just amazing that USA Today picked it up and their Humankind video series. Yeah. And on Facebook, that video now has 5 million views. Mm -hmm. And that's not by accident. I mean, there's, you can feel it. You know, when something has that kind of power, it's, it's going to grow. And, yeah. and I think any time that we could share that story, it just shares the power of our students here in Lee County. It's a hashtag powerful story. If I've there, ever you seen one. there you go. There you go. How I, So I haven't... I haven't seen her since that day, mm -hmm. and I know she was just just starting to get used mm -hmm. to walking with a uh, prosthetic. So how how is she she's doing, doing now? She's doing fantastic, yeah. and not only is she walking, um, but now her academics. I mean, she's doing exceptionally well. She's learning English. I've you know we're able to communicate on you know through English, and she's a, she's a very intelligent young lady. Um, she's actually had some of her literature pieces published in our newspaper that we've translated from Creole into English. And, um, she's an exceptional young lady. That's, awesome. I, that's somebody that, you know, you wonder down the road, what happens from that one moment, you know, there's little moments in life that, uh, turn into big moments. And I, I see that just snowballing into more and more positive things. Mm -hmm. Um, so another thing I wanted to talk about was some some new safety measures that have been added to South mm -hmm. Fort Myers High School and most of our schools, mm -hmm. uh, especially a lot of our high schools mm -hmm. this past year. Um, I know there's a new way to, when you enter the school, a new security measure. Mm -hmm. You just tell us about some of the things that have made South Fort Myers High a safer school. Well, I mean, first of all, we have a single point entry. There's only one way in, one way out. 
Um, you know, we still have our fire escape doors if needed, but for the most part, everybody comes in and out of the front office. And the uh, district has installed a system where you have to use your security badge to uh, get into the door. And multiple doors throughout the building now have that, that system. And if you're a visitor and you do not have that security badge, there's a video camera that allows the front receptionist to see who you are, you know, see your ID, to, to know who you are before you even come into the building. Um, it's one of those things that when it happened, I didn't really know what the impact would be. I think the initial reaction was it was a little cumbersome at first because, you know, something new. But it's not quite as a free flowing as absolutely. it was before. Yeah. But even those who complained about it at the beginning, I've gotten more and more responses from them where they appreciate it because it makes everybody feel more secure. Mm -hmm. And I would think that not only does it make you feel secure, it is more secure because you're not going to open a door unless either someone says, you know, knows who you are and allows you in or if you have that security badge. Mm -hmm. And have they installed all the, what they call the red lock doors mm -hmm. throughout the school? We've always had that. Okay. I thought and, those were um, you know, I think, South, I think maybe we went to South because you already had them. So yeah. they're using them as an example mm -hmm. of what they're going to be installing in, in all the schools. So just yeah. tell us real quickly what those are. Well, just red lock doors. I mean, red lock keys is just a matter that, uh, you know, every classroom, the, the kids, once they go into it is locked. And the only way that you're able to get into the room is, you know, the teacher has to let you in. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a great feature. You know, I think sometimes at first, you know, you get through that, you know, I don't know if I like having all the doors locked, you know, kind of attitude. But when you realize what the reasons behind it, it's it's a it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Is there uh, anything else South Fort Myers High School related that you wanted to to mention or talk about before we move on to the uh, speed round? Uh, what else would I want you to know? Oh, one thing I'd like you to know, too, is uh, with our partners across the street with the Minnesota Twins, we're going to start having more and more interactions with the Twins players and our international students mm -hmm. where they're going to come over and help our kids. Um, you know, the Minnesota Twins have an international center for South American baseball players, mm -hmm. and they need help for those guys to learn English and learn how to be in America and all that kind of stuff. And so we're sort of cross-pollinating between our school and their university uh, to where those kids are ready and also helping our kids get ready as well because a lot of times – our kids could learn by teaching them and vice versa. So that's a really cool feature. But in the end, I just encourage people to come out to South Fort Myers High School and see what it's really about. I, you know, don't, don't hold yourself to opinions of others. See it for yourself. I have more and more people that come to the school and say, I didn't know you had this. I can't believe this is going on or how, I can't believe how cool your kids are. Um, we got a very with it uh, school. The kids are, are very with it. I think a lot of time, you know, when you talk about young adults, we got a lot of young adults there. They're, they're kids that are, are living real lives every day. And um, you can talk to them just like you and I are. And uh, I mean, they're ready to make a big impact. Cool. Uh, oh, one thing I wanted, I forgot to ask you about was you, so you just came from big principals meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure you have a lot of meetings as a principal. Um, what, what, I've always, I've always wondered what, so what goes on in those meetings? That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, I think it's just a lot about, you know, how to deal with the, um, the struggles of education, you know, on a daily basis. I think that, uh, sometimes there's, it's, it's, it's a little bit about how do you deal with the, the processes put in place by the state. Some of it is how do you deal with some of the, uh, obstacles that could be in the way of what you want to accomplish versus what the reality is with funding and you know sort of blending that all together and you know we're always looking to find the, the way to make everything efficient and purposeful and it's it's a, it's a it's a delicate line because there's a lot of really cool things that you can do but the reality is is that money talks and um you know you gotta you gotta make sure that everything works in in, in the direction of moving forward and uh, you can have a lot of great ideas, but you got to make it happen. You, you know, you got to put that legwork in. And, you know, just even at South itself, there was, you know, there's been a lot of talk, you know, at the beginning of what we were going to do and what we were going to accomplish. And, you know, we're on year three and we're now starting to see the fruits of that labor. 
you know, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of hard work. And, you know, just in this district in general, I mean, there's like 100,000 students. You know, when there's a vision, it's not going to happen overnight. It takes persistence, persistence, persistence. And it takes people who care about people, who care about, you know, the, the goal of uh, doing what's right for the kids and, or the young adults and uh, what's right for the community. All right. So what is your favorite book? My favorite book, I'll tell you, I can't think of the, the title of the book, but when I was a kid, I kept, I, re, I think it was in regards, it was like a biography on the USS Constitution, which I don't know if you know, was a boat that was never sunk in the Revolutionary War and had like this, it was shot at several times and they called it Old Ironside. I was just going to say, I thought Old Ironside, yeah. And uh, it's, you know, for it's, it's weird how you pick up something in your life and you think about it, you know, later down the road. And I always think back to that boat, you know, where it was unsinkable, you know? And in fact, oh, I, I say about five, six years ago, I took my, my daughter and I up to Boston and we visited that boat. And it's so funny that you, you know, you read something from your childhood and you see it in person. I've, I've visited that in Boston too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a really, really cool thing. You know, when you look at that whole thing and, and, and the impact that it had on history. And so that's just something that, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's my powerful is that regardless of any obstacle, you just, keep trucking along you know that's a powerful ship there you, are you are you a history buff <laughs> i am a, i was a history major yeah Oh, okay yeah um do you have a favorite time period that you like to study or uh you know i think you've talked to any uh social studies teacher you know u.s history is always awesome mm -hmm. and um i my family's my father's side of the family's from uh, virginia so i think i like a lot of the colonial history mm -hmm. i like a lot of civil war history but i'm i'm I mean, American history in general is just really neat. Yeah. You know, you have a favorite president, favorite president. That's not one of the questions, but I'm just spitting. Well, on. I think that if you looked at all the presidents, I think there's a lot to get praise and I think there's a lot to get criticized. And my, I won't tell you who my favorite president is, but I would say that if you really looked at the history of each person, there's some people that you'd be very, very surprised at the things that they accomplished that they never got recognized for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just yeah. like you doing this podcast right here. <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay, so what's your favorite movie or TV show? I'd have to say, and I'm going to go a totally different direction here, and this is one of the things that won my wife over at the holidays. <laughs> Die Hard. Yeah, okay, so do you consider Die Hard a Christmas movie? See, it is a Christmas movie. Uh, and when my I was dating my wife, I said, you know, we need to watch a nice Christmas movie. <laughs> And she said, oh, okay. You know, she's thinking of White Christmas and all these other things. And I said, no, no, no. We're going Die Hard. That's not a Christmas movie. She called her father. And now my future father-in-law confirmed with her that it is a Christmas movie. And that's when I knew that I was in the family. Yeah, okay. So with Bruce Willis and The Tower, I now became married because that set the <laughs> steps moving forward. All right. Well, we'll have to agree to disagree on that one. It's not... <laughs> It's not a Christmas movie if it just happens to take place at Christmas time. If the central, if the plot and the storyline is, if Christmas is essential to the story, then it's a Christmas movie. And I want you to know, living in the day and age that we live in, Run DMC's rendition of the holiday classic is, shows diversity and understanding of modern America. Okay. So I say, not only is it a Christmas movie, it is a Christmas movie of America. All right. What is your favorite song or who's your favorite musical artist? Um, By the way, I, I think Die Hard's a great movie. Right. But anyway, all right, I digress. Um, you know something? Um, I'm really, uh, I know it's going to sound sort of passe. I think about a year past the, the point. But I really like Bruno Mars. And yeah. um, I went to the concert last year. And I was blown away as to how good of a performer he was. Mm -hmm. And not only is he a great singer and all this other stuff, I, you know, literally the, the dancing, I don't know how he did it. Yeah. And so I don't know how very he, charismatic and yeah. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, he, he went nonstop for like three hours. Oh. I, I mean, you talk about a workout. I don't know how he did yeah. it. I thought his, uh, the halftime performance in the Super Bowl was great. Oh, he's, he's amazing. Yeah. You know, the whole time I saw him and everything. So I, I really am, uh, and taken back by that. And I will also tell you this. I took my daughter, uh, daughters to Taylor Swift and I thought I would be wanting to pull my fingernails out 
but she's actually a very good performer as well yeah. too. And I we we saw it in Miami, and I was actually pretty impressed by her as well as too. I'm not really a Taylor Swift. I'm not a Swifty. Okay. All right. I'm gonna keep it hip here, but uh, I was impressed by your effort. All right. You heard it here, folks. Ed Matthews impressed by Taylor Swift. <laughs> uh, okay. So my next question is: I think you already answered it um, with with history. But yep. uh, what was your favorite subject in school growing up? Was history. it always history? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll move on. All right. So last one: if you could have, this might be good since you're a history buff. If you could have dinner with anyone, uh, living or dead, who would it be and why? If I could have, there's so many different people. I know, it's tough. Um, hmm. Now, will this air before Easter? No, this won't air before no. Easter. I no. thought I could go biblical on you. <laughs> but um, you know, if I could have dinner with anybody right now, I think that historically in context of what's going on in the world, maybe uh, you know, maybe maybe like a Julian Assange. Yeah, yeah. You know, that'd be a pretty cool guy to actually have conversation with because you talk about somebody that is, so, is a gatekeeper to a lot of knowledge that, you know, certainly a lot of people would, would either like you not to know or mm. to know. I think it'd be very interesting to see what the realities are. Mm. Controversial answer there, Ed. Well, I, you could play that from all angles. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up? I just want to say thank you to you and to the whole communications department. You know, I, it was told to me a long time ago that you're only as good as your story. And you guys make sure that our story is powerful and that uh, our kids are represented in a positive direction. And I just encourage you to keep doing it. And I just want to say thank you for all that you do. All right. Anytime, man. You too. All right, Ed Matthews, principal, South Fort Myers High School. Thanks again for coming on. And thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you next time. Thank you.